Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Blue Origin launches experiments for NASA on suborbital flight, Piper responds to proposed AD on multiple models, and the NTSB is feeling the pinch from the shutdown. Welcome to your Friday edition of Airborne Unlimited. I'm Skylar Vanell. We start our program off today with flights into space might be closer than you think. As Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin launches their experimental test flight. On Wednesday, Blue Origin made its 10th successful test flight. They used the new Shepard reusable launch vehicle, which is designed to hold six passengers, making it the fourth flight for the capsule. It launched multiple payloads, including eight NASA experiments, to an altitude of 66 miles. The rocket lifted off at the company's West Texas launch complex at 9.05 a.m. local time. The flight lasted a total of 10 minutes and 15 seconds. And just as planned, the reusable rockets touched down on the landing pad. And touchdown. Welcome home, New Shepard. Wow, absolutely spectacular flight. That is the fourth mission to space and back for that rocket. That, everybody, is a reusable rocket. The capsule returned back to Earth under a parachute where it landed in the Texas Plains. Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos wants to carry paying passengers on suborbital flights as early as this year, but said the company's not in a rush. So how much are tickets? Well, the company has not started selling flights just yet, and they have not released how much a seat will cost. After the break, why United Airlines passengers were stuck on a plane for more than 16 hours on the ground as we take you around the patch. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. On Saturday, a United Airlines flight from New York to Hong Kong was diverted to Goose Bay, Canada because of a medical emergency on board. But due to the extreme cold temperatures, the Boeing 777 experienced a mechanical issue. Since there were no Canadian customs personnel on duty, the passengers had to remain on board overnight, where the temperatures dropped below negative 22 degrees outside. After 16 hours, another plane rescued the stranded passengers and took them back to Newark, where they were rerouted. Plans of a new launch site and factory could be in the near future for startup rocket company Firefly, where the projected $52 million site will be near Cape Canaveral, Florida. The Texas-based company hopes to cash in on the expected boom of the small satellite launches over the next couple of years. Firefly wants to get their Alpha rocket off the ground by December. The rocket is designed to carry 2,200 pounds into low Earth orbit and at an estimated cost of $15 million per launch. Bell Helicopter will build 25 AH-1Z helicopters for the Marines. The company has been awarded a contract modification to a previously awarded fixed-price incentive contract. The estimated value, around $44 million. This modification has an option for the production and delivery of 25 AH-1Z aircraft and 25 stores control units. Work will be performed at Bell's Fort Worth and Amarillo sites. The project is expected to be completed by January of 2022. If you know any graduating high school senior students, Interested in aviation careers, applications are now open for the $2,000 Gamma Scholarship.
The Edward W. Stimson Aviation Excellence Scholarship Award will be given out to students accepted in an aviation degree program at a university or college. And that wraps up today's trip around the patch. When we come back, the NTSB is filling the pinch and Piper responds to the proposed AD. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The FAA recently proposed an AD for certain Piper models. This comes after a report of a fatigue crack found on the lower main wing spar cap on the Piper Aero model airplane. An investigation found repeated high load operating conditions accelerated the growth of the crack. The structural configuration of the wing assembly made it difficult to visually inspect due to the location. The FAA said if the issue is not taken care of, the wing could separate from the fuselage during flight. In its comments on the proposed AD, Piper recommends that the FAA convert it to an SAIB. In a statement, Piper says by removing the wings or wing attachment fasteners on this many aircraft could cause unintended damage. This could lead to new safety concerns for the FAA, Piper, and owners of the aircraft. Repairs could cost around $8,200. And our final story of the day, the partial government shutdown is forcing a delay in NTSB accident investigations. The NTSB has 397 employees, but due to the shutdown, the agency is operating with the bare minimums of only 31. With reduced staff, they are unable to investigate accidents at the scene. As of last week, there were 14 accidents that are waiting for an investigation. Ten of those involve an aircraft. The report said of those accidents, 25 people have died. But it did not say which of those were aviation related. Accident investigations will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. And those will fully resume once the government finds a solution and employees are called back to work. Delays are expected due to a backlog caused by the furloughs. That's all we have time for today. If you have a story suggestion, send us an email over at news-spy at arrow-news.net. From all of us here at Arrow News, thanks for watching, and we'll see you back on Monday for more Airborne Unlimited.